Hi YouTube, it's Janelle here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about cybersecurity and how to keep your online banking activity and financial transactions safe online. So a lot of different people have been writing to me saying, you know, in all your videos, you're always talking about these apps that you use and talking about doing transactions online on the computer. Is it really safe to bank online? And um, and if so, like, you know, how can you do it in the safest possible way? Because people are obviously like, it's natural to be worried about um, a breach or something like that, especially Especially with a lot of the breaches that have come out in the news and the media in the past few years. Um, so the first thing I'll say is that you definitely do not have to be afraid of only online banking and financial transactions online. You know, if you think about it, like the Target breach was just people using their credit cards to buy stuff in the stores, in Target stores, and then it got hacked and people's personal information was, you know, a, a basically available to the hackers just because they used their credit card at the store. So. In, in this day and age where everything is digital and, and everything is becoming more and more technological, you know, it's it's unavoidable that you're going to have to use technology for a lot of the things that you didn't use to use technology for. So the first thing is, I would say, just embrace it, okay? Embrace online banking, embrace doing things with an app or a website um, instead of going and talking to a person, you know, the old school way, because that's just the way of the future. Like, that's just the direction that we're heading in. So you got to just, first of all, sit in that, you know, reality and accept it. Um, so don't try to avoid it or work around it because that means you're going to be walking around with cash and envelopes and all kinds of like, I mean, you could do that, but it's just really, really hard um, not to discourage anybody who thinks that that system works for them. But just saying that, you know, that makes things a little bit harder for you. And if you could master online banking and um, doing things with mobile apps and on websites, then you're going to make things a lot easier for yourself. So it is a challenge, but it's definitely something that pays off in the end and that is worth it, especially for me. I found that it's worth it. So um, that's that's my kind of disclaimer. So then I'll jump into like three top ways that I would recommend um, you could basically uh, make your banking safer. Um, pretty much it's it's gonna it's gonna be you know as safe as it is <laughs> to bank online no matter what. But there are some measures that you can put in place if you're like extra hypersensitive and scared when it comes to um, cybersecurity. So. The first thing is you can, this is probably the most secure way to do stuff from your own home, from your house, is to have one device that you have, um, I mean, probably like an iPad because it's going to be a device that you're not really using all the time. Make sure that it's password protected and only use it for financial stuff, financial transactions, online banking, making transfers, all that kind of stuff. Only use this one device. I recommend the iPad, like I said, so just one iPad or whatever device you have in your home. This is the only one that you're going to use for financial stuff. You're not going to use, and you're actually not going to use that device for anything else either. So that means you cannot download any other apps on this device. So if, for example, you come home, you need, you know, you need to pay somebody on Venmo or whatever. You're going to go to your iPad. You're going to use your password to unlock it. Have a really good, strong password, obviously, not like yellow, one, two, three. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and log in and then you go to your apps or whatever, only your financial apps that you have on there. You don't have no games. You don't have no random other apps, no Instagram, no social media, nothing like this iPad. This device is literally only for your financial stuff and you don't have any other apps. You go on there, you do you take care of your financial business and that's it. And you just leave it at home. You never take it out of your house. You always leave it there. Kind of like this is like the safest place for it, right? Because if you lose it somewhere and then it can get hacked or whatever. So if you're really, really super hyper extra sensitive and scared, then this is probably the best option for you. But obviously from the way it sounds, you could probably tell it's not the most like realistic, right? It's not really that convenient. Um, but again, if you want the safest option to online bank, that's probably the best and most secure way to go. The second way that you can be super, super hyper aware of your online banking safety is to only um, use incognito mode when you are doing online banking. So for example, if you're on your computer, you know, you have to pull up a certain website to pay a bill or to set up an online payment or to transact with somebody that you owe money to, whatever you're doing related to your money, you would only do incognito mode. Um, and if you don't have a web browser that allows you to do incognito mode, a, you need to get your life together. You need to upgrade your web browser to something more relevant and use incognito mode. Or if that's not an option for you for whatever reason, you really love your old school web browser or whatever, then B, the other option would be to do your online stuff. And then after you're done with your, all your activity and transactions, you go through and delete your cookies, like delete all the cash history, the history, all of the stuff that you have on there, go to your settings and delete it all. That's probably the best way to keep, you know, your transactions as secure as possible. 
um, because of the fact that A, incognito means that your computer is not going to save any of that stuff and B, just as a backup, you know, you're going to delete everything that it had saved or if anything did get, you know, put into the system, you're going to delete it. So just those are little things that you could do if you um, don't necessarily want to do like the one device at your home thing or if you know that you're still going to be using your laptop at work or your computer at your friend's house or whatever to do financial transactions, then you might want to just make sure you always do incognito or delete everything after. The last tip that I have is this is going to be the least secure one. So obviously this is like the lowest lift. Like I don't really want to go that hard. I don't really want to do that much work. I don't want to go out of my way too much, but I do want to make sure I'm trying to be a little secure here and do something um, to help out as much as I can. So this one would be only using one web browser period. So every time you're going to be doing your online banking transactions or your whatever you're going to be doing, you only use one web browser. If that's, you know, Chrome, every time you're using, you know, doing something financial, only do Chrome. If that's, you know, whatever Firefox, whatever Safari, whatever you are using, just make sure that you only use that same web browser every time you're going to log into your online banking, every time you're going to pay a bill, every time you're going to use any kind of, um, you know, log into a personal loan or log in to check your credit or anything that you're going to do related to your finances make sure you only use one uh the same web browser every single time and just keep it to that one that way you don't you know transfer information from one browser to another browser to another browser that allows it to be a little bit more hackable although um this is not like a super high security measure it is a quick thing that you can do if you bank on the computer a lot or if you do a lot of transactions on the computer a lot to help you out that's all that I have for you guys in this video. If you don't follow me on Instagram and Facebook, go ahead and follow me now. I also have a brand new Twitter page. I'm not necessarily a Twitter girl. Like I wasn't really using Twitter that much because I'm not constantly on social media, but there's a lot of valuable information, articles and people posting that I like to follow on Twitter. So I decided to just jump on there anyway. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, support me, like, follow, click, thumbs up, all of that good stuff. Comment and engage with me. I try to post as much as I can and stay engaged with people that um, you know, reach out to me. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Click the red subscribe button right now and subscribe and join me on my financial journey. I post videos every single week. Um, hopefully be posting a little bit more often soon, but um, that's what I'm posting right now. And I just want to make sure that everybody has um, the notifications on and all that stuff so you can see every time I post new content. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I have for you guys in this video. If you have any comments um, or you have had any experience with cybersecurity issues, go ahead and put them below. Um, and if not, you can always write to me privately at Miss be helpful at gmail.com. Till next time, peace.